ask you this. Raise your hand if this is going to be your first time going to the World Youth Day. First timers. Very good. We have a lot of first timers. Raise your hand if you have gone once or twice already. Once or twice already. Very good. Good number too. How about those who have gone more than three times? Raise your hand. Father, more than three times? How many times have you gone, Father Juan? Five times. Six times. So the last time that you went was in Brazil, okay, and the one before that, Madrid, Germany, yeah, Spain. That's that's right, that's right. P pilgrimage. Where you stay, pilgrimage. On the surface, it is like going on a tour. It's fun. It's really fun. But at the same time, it's not a tour. And I will explain why. I love World Youth Day. The first time I went was in 2002 at, in Toronto, Canada, way back when I was still a college student. And I didn't know what to expect. And I keep coming back because in World Youth Day, you see something more that can answer the deep yearning of your heart. We all know the word Catholic, universal. So when you go to the World Youth Day, it's not only universal in the head, but you leave the universality of the church. The experiences are just awesome when we are open to the experience. There are three favorite experiences of my uh, times of going to the World Youth Day. The first one, let me try to remember it was, was it, whether it was in Brazil or not. It was in Brazil. The first experience was, you know, every now and then you see on YouTube, when people do all of that flash mob singing or dancing, I like that one in London, and we sing that Hey Jude. The thousands of people sing that Hey Jude karaoke. It's awesome. Try this. Singing Alleluia with 3.5 million people. Try that. 3.5 million people all sing the same song. Telling that story is still giving me goosebumps. 3.5 million people. My second favorite experience was also in um, I'm a Rio, Madrid. I'm a Rio in uh, Brazil. You know, the last night, those who went to uh, Rio remembered that because of the rain this whole week, we had to cancel, we had to move out of the place that they already planned to have the final event. Because of that, they did not have enough time to prepare the beach where everybody was going to gather to have the vigil and the final mass with Pope Francis. But that night, they also knew, they found out that all the Brazilians, people from out of town, coming in, we thought Atlanta traffic was bad. <laughs> like hours. On the news, it was hours. People coming in from different cities outside of the, country of, uh, the city of Rio for hours to come in. And because there were so many of them coming in, they actually made the announcement to all the foreigners who were there for the World Youth Day, if you are kind enough to go back to your hotels tonight instead of staying overnight there, because these people were coming more than the numbers more than that we expected, and they wouldn't have enough place, even on the beach. The beach was like several kilometers long. There would not be enough space for everybody to sleep on. So if you are kind enough to go back, not one complaint. Everybody went back to the hotel, the foreigners went back to the hotels to give that space for the local Brazilians. Now, you have to understand too, before that time and after that time, people were so concerned about the security and the safety in the World Youth Day. In a big gathering, like three million people, especially young people. In Madrid, 1.5 million for the closing. Just two weeks before that, there was a gathering in London for just 700 people. It was all kind of violent. And that's why people were so afraid of this gathering. But not one single fight, not one single conflict among the 3.5 million young people. There is something very special there. My third favorite experience, also in Rio, during the final vigil, the vigil on the last night, we had an adoration. Pope Francis being Pope Francis, 
He just reading the, uh, the script, the reflection from the script. But after a while, he just threw that away and said, guess what? Let's spend 15 minutes in silence adoration. Imagine with 3.5 young people, just half an hour before that, jumping up and down, dancing, playing soccer, swimming, screaming, and yelling, chasing each other around. In the next 15 minutes, you didn't hear a sound except for the sound of the ocean waves and maybe some helicopters. Why? The Blessed Sacrament, two miles away, two miles away from the last person. There's something about that. So I'm asking you, what kind of world tour can give you that experience? It is more than a tour. Most of you are going to begin this pilgrimage. We know that God always accompanies us and God always speaks to us. We understand that God is most obvious to us in our sacraments. That's our belief. Through our intellects when we understand Him. But maybe there's another part of God coming to us, God's revelation to us, that I want to invite you to pay attention in this pilgrimage. The experience. Experience. Be open to the experience because God speaks to us through the experiences. In order to hear what he's trying to tell us through the experiences, we may have to have some disposition too. Number one, obviously, be open and pay attention. Because if we don't pay attention, we're not going to hear it. We're not going to see it. Number two, have kind of an easygoing attitude a little bit because you're not, you're going outside of the United States. There will be no Starbucks around the corner or the ATM machine for you anymore. Huh? You may have to move back to where you have to move the last night, like that in Rio that we experienced. Be open to all of those so that you can hear and you can figure out what is God trying to tell us. As a practical gift for you, I'm going to give you this method of reflecting at the end of the day. There is a, the name for it. Those who are trained in the Ignatius uh, tradition of spirituality, they call it the examine or examination of conscience. Twice a day, these Jesuits are trained to do the examination of con conscience. And it could be complicated, but I will summarize it into four questions that you all can do it at least once a day. And not only those who are going on a pilgrimage, but those who stay home. You can pick it up and from today, you can start practicing this. Four questions. And these will provide you plenty of materials for prayer. Number one, what is the one thing or a couple of things that I want to thank God for? And be very specific. Number two, what is the one thing or a couple of things that I want to say sorry to God about? Number three, when was the last time or what events during the day that helped me see God's presence in life? And number four, what can I do to be more Christ-like tomorrow? I didn't come up with this. The method from St. Ignatius, the examine. Number one, what is the one thing or a couple of things that I want to thank God for? Number two, what is the one thing or a couple of things that I want to say sorry to God about and be as specific as possible? Number three, in what event of the day or the last time I experienced God's presence? And number four, what can I do tomorrow to be more Christ-like? I invite you, if you are going on, my group was the Salesian group from New York. They had nightly reflection. We came together, we unfold the experience of the day. They didn't use a particular four questions, but they also had something similar to that. I invite you, if you haven't had a program yet, every night if you could not do it as a group, do it as a small group, do it on an individual basis, go over four questions. And beyond the World Youth Day, I invite you to do that too. When you come back, when you have a chance to gather your group, your church, your parish, your ministry together, reflect on those four questions. Because what we want is that after we come back, the fourth question will move you forward 
So that this trip is just not a thing to do for fun, but this is God communicating to you. I want you to experience this, to see the greatness of my presence in this church, in the world, in young people. Now I want you to do something. What can you do to be more Christ-like? With all that, I wish you, I'm not going to go this time, I wish you and I pray for all God's blessing, for your safety, and your, all for your openness, so that you can truly experience God's communication to you through this experience and beyond. Amen.